Hi everyone, welcome to my channel Design with Uzbe. Continuing with CSWA practice problems, today we'll work on question 2.7. Let's take a look at this question. So in this question, unit of measurement is millimeter gram second. Like always, we need to ensure we are using the same unit of measurement in our solid work setting. Now, looking at this geometry, clearly this is a symmetric geometry and we have different views. We have the top view, front view, and the right view. Now, my approach to model this part is to first focus on the base of the geometry. We can model the base of the geometry and then after that we can focus on two vertical features that you can see here. We can model one of them and then we can use mirror command to make the second one. So with this introduction, let's jump into SOLIDWORKS and start modeling this part. So in SOLIDWORKS, first thing first, we need to check unit of measurement. And you can see we have the correct unit of measurement, which is millimeter gram second. Now, in order to model the part, as I mentioned, I'm going to start with the base of the geometry. So I click on a sketch, I click on the sketch command, and I'm going to choose top plane. Here, because we are dealing with the symmetric geometry, I'm going to make a construction line here just for my reference because it makes my life much easier. So from this sketch, I click on line command, drop down menu, and I click on center line. And I'm going to make this center line here. This is a symmetric line basically for me. Now let's just start with modeling the base of the geometry. To do this, I click on a sketch, I choose rectangle, and I'm going to make a rectangle. Now. Because we know our geometry is symmetric, we need to have a symmetric relationship. To do this, click on the top line from the rectangle, hold control, click on this symmetry line, and click on the bottom line. And now you can see from the options, we have a symmetric option. Click on it. And now the rectangle is positioned such that it has a symmetric relationship, which is great. Next step we need to have some sort of arc shape here. So what I can do, I can either use arc command or circle command. It doesn't really matter. So I'm gonna click on arc command. I click on the center point of the geometry, I click on this top point, and I have my arc here. Great. Now, looking at the geometry, we also need a slot in the base of the geometry. So what I can do, I can click on a sketch command, then I choose slot command, and then here, I'm going to make a slot. OK, so now I have the base of the geometry. Let's add some dimensions to it. Looking at the top view in a question, you can see that the distance between the left line and origin of the geometry must be 86 mm. So I click on a smart dimension, click on the left line, click on the origin of the geometry. This distance must be 86 mm. OK. We can see that the radius of the arc must be 20 millimeters. So I click on the arc, and this radius should be 20 millimeter. Now let's focus on this slot and the dimensions that we have from the top view. We can see from the top view that the distance between the center point, left center point, and a right center point of this slot should be 23 millimeters. So I click here, and this should be 23. And also, the distance between the bottom line and the top line of this slot must be 14 millimeters. So it should be 14. Okay, great. So now we have all the dimensions. We can't see any other dimensions in the top view or other views. So most probably, we are missing a relationship here. Like always, when we have an arc, we need to make sure that we have a tangent relationship between the arc and the line. So what I can do, I can click on the arc, hold control, click on the line, and from the relationships option, I can choose tangent. And now you can see the geometry is fully defined. Okay, awesome. So now we are ready to use extruded bus feature and make it like a 3D model. So to do this, click on feature, click on extruded bus, and here we need to select the contour. We select this contour, select this one, and we know that from the right view in the question, the thickness that we need is 9 mm. If you look at the right view, they mention 9 mm typical, which means that that thickness is going to be applied to every single feature. So I change the thickness to 9, click on OK, and that's it. 
Okay, so now we have the base of the geometry, it's time to focus on the vertical features. To do this, I click on a sketch, click on a sketch command, and I'm going to choose this plane. Now, same process, we can start with the rectangle command, we click on the corner and make a rectangle. We also need an arc shape in the top. Again, you can choose arc command or circle command, I'm going to choose circle for this time. I click on the center point and make a circle. We also need a second circle for the hole in this geometry. So I click on circle command again and make a second circle. Okay, so now we have the geometry. It's time to add dimensions. Looking at the front view, we know that the distance between the bottom line and the center point of the geometry should be 38 millimeters. So I click here and this distance should be 38. Also, we know that the diameter of the large circle should be 35 millimeters. So I click on it and this should be 35. And finally, the diameter of the hole is 14 millimeters. So I select it and 14. Okay, so now we have the 2D sketch fully defined. We can click on feature, click on extruded bus, and you can select the contour you want. I select the bottom one, second, third, and a fourth one. Okay. So everything is great except that the direction of the extrusion is wrong. To change the direction, simply click on reverse direction. And we have 9 millimeter thickness, which is okay, according to the right view shown in a question. So I click on OK, and now I have my feature made. Okay, great. So now I have the first vertical feature. For the second one, you can simply repeat the same process or you can use mirror command which is easier. So let me show you how to use mirror command. So from feature tab we click on mirror command and then here we are asked to add the symmetry plane or a mirror plane. So what I can do here I can click on model tree and from the plane I choose front plane. Now click on a feature to mirror. What feature do we want to mirror? The feature is this feature, boss extrude number two. So click on it and now you can see the preview shown. Click on OK and now we have the final geometry. You can see both features are modeled. Okay, great. So now the modeling is done. It's time to check the total volume. Make sure this modeling is correct. Let's go back to the question and check the total volume. So in the question, you can see the total volume is 56,490 cubic millimeters. Let's go back to the SOLIDWORKS and check the total volume for our model. In SOLIDWORKS, we can click on Evaluate, click on Mass Properties, and here you can see the total volume. The total volume is 56,489.5 cubic millimeters. If you round up this number, you can get exactly the same answer as shown in a main question. So this is showing that our modeling is correct and we have the correct answer. Okay, I think that's it for today. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any comment or feedback, please leave comments down below. Thanks again for watching. Hope to see you again soon in the next videos.